wake shocks coming off as well, and the wake coming off the capsule. This is purely visualizing it in, in the grid space. You, that is how the mesh adapts time step after time step. And we apply this transform over and over again. Every time we, we modify the flow, we reapply it, figure out where does my resolution need to be now. You know, I've got my grid at time t, my grid at time t plus one. What did I have? What, what, what can I coarsen? What do I have to refine? And so with each of these grid points, we do calculation. So this is a picture of the, the, the specific internal energy, if you like, the temperature of every point on this grid. And you can see here, well, this, this, is actually, this, this is a really beautiful example, actually, of, of how when one of these capsules re-enters the atmosphere, the, sh the, the heating on the capsule, the reason you have a heat shield and it gets so hot is not because of friction. It's not because you've got friction of the air rubbing past the capsule. It's because the compressive heating of that enormously powerful shock wave in front of it leads to very hot gas behind it. And you can see the front, row, front, front curve of the shock with unheated gas, and you hit the shock, and boom, suddenly it's bright red, yellow. It's extremely hot right in front of the capsule there. And that's why we need the heat shield on the capsule. What I love about this is actually the trailing edge. You can actually see where those two shocks coming from the back have combined, and they've reheated that gas, and you're getting an extra hot bit of gas in the wake there. It's absolutely beautiful. So, so let's see this in action one, one, another time. This is here. I've got, and this, this is kind of like a, the most basic of CFD simulations. This is subsonic flow. I've got an object, and I'm just looking at the vortices being shed off my, off my, off my object. If your CFD can't do this, then, then, then you should just go home, because there's nothing else. You, there's, there's, you're never going to make it. So, <laughs> sorry, that's a bit derogatory. Anyway, <coughs> <laughs> so, so, so you, you, can see the, you can see the vortex structure coming off the back of this. This, this, is, this is subsonic, no shock wave. Same object, but you know, later in time, if you like. And, um, and you can see the detailed structure following it in its wake. So if we play that again, and this time we superimpose the grid lines over the top, you'll see how the grid lines map and follow exactly where that flow is. So you can see those vortices underneath it. You can see the curls of the grid as they map to that flow. And so we're tracking temperature and density and every, every single flow property that we've got, the grid is adapting to so that we lose none of that detail, or at least no more of that detail than we've specified in our lossy, in, in, in our, in our compression tolerance. So, so great. We've got a mechanism to get a grid, and it automatically adapts to not just our objects in the system, but to the flow around it. I don't have to map an entire giant high-density wake to capture that vorticity. It just automatically conforms itself to that vorticity. That's incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. It saves me an enormous amount of compute power. But it does present another problem. And the corner is we're going to ignite just a spot artificially. We're going to set it off and the flame front is going to start burning outwards. And it's going to first burn outwards in a bubble, but these are walls. The top, the bottom, and the left-hand side are all walls. So the, uh, the pressure waves and the, and, and the expanding bubble is going to bounce off the wall and come back in. And you're going to see it crashing into this expanding bubble of flame and distorting it with really interesting turbulence effects. We're looking at density here. so. As things burn, it gets hot. The dark blue will, become, will, will be low density where it's hot. And you'll see all of the acoustic waves start traveling around. So as it expands, first the bottom and the left-hand sides reflect. And you've still got pretty steady burning, although you can already see in the bottom left-hand corner things are changing. You can see lots of these waves traveling outwards from it. Some come in reflecting off the top, slam into the bubble, and start distorting it and compressing it. Leading up ahead of it, you've got all these other acoustic waves adding onto each other. And so we turn on the grid. And remember I said to you, when the grid is really refined, all you see is a white blur, because the cells are so incredibly fine. And you can see the grid tracking each of the wave fronts of these acoustic waves. If you look on the left-hand side, that blue area is actually where it's burning. It's where the flame is. And you can see this. It's tracking so much detail in the flame. I'll show you on the next video exactly what kind of detail it's tracking. It's just really filled with detail on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side, we're only keeping information exactly where those, those, those acoustic wave fronts, those pressure wave fronts are. If you actually so you can see the flame beginning to form, and it gets hotter and hotter in the core, and it's burning in that bubble that you saw expanding at first. And again, what you'll see is, again, is the pressure wave travels down and hits it. It starts distorting that flame. It pushes it down in the top. And the bottom left-hand corner, there's a bit of unburned gas, something just reflected out of the corner there. And you can see it rolling up around that area. You can see those really, really fine vortices this beautiful level of detail. There are 60, you can, you can zoom in 60,000 times in the simulation and still catch data. That is how much detail there is on this. 
and you can see the beautiful, beautiful flame structure forming in the top corner. And all of this is because the grid is tracking every single little loop, every vortex, every little flame front. And so that is a snapshot in microsecond time of how this exploding flame is forming. <laughs>